What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is Ira Reviews, a show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should check out or not. So make sure you subscribe in order to get more of these every single week. To start off with, we're going to talk about Batman the White Knight number one. So this is by Sean Gordon Murphy, who's doing both the writing and the artistry on it. So the interesting thing about Batman White Knight is that it's going to take on the perspective not of Batman himself, but of the Joker. And not only is it going to be the Joker, but it's going to be an Elseworlds style story where we actually have a definite name and identity to this Joker, and it revives the Batman of Tim Burton's era, Jack Napier. But let's dive into the story. So to start off with what we see is we see a Batman on the hunt for this Joker character who's kind of riding around on a scooter through the city of Gotham. And not only is he riding around in the city, but he's causing chaos and mayhem in his wake. The thing is, he's not the one necessarily initiating the chaos. He's just simply leading the Batman to these particular places. So to start off with, you know, they jump over the ferry. So you've got the Batmobile with, Bar you know, Barbara Gordon's Batgirl trailing behind. They jump over in a particular time. Uh, so they, you know, they're going to gif that and have it on the internet forever. And then all of a sudden, we go on to the next of their greatest hits. And he starts driving over the rooftops. And, you know, the Joker and Barbara Gordon's Batgirl are starting to point out. It's just like, oh my god, why did you know that these buildings weren't going to collapse, Bruce? You've got to be careful. And then they dive into a construction site where all of a sudden the Batmobile is about to smash into all these different workers and cause untold amounts of damage and death until Nightwing, or Mulletwing, as the Joker seems to put him, comes in and makes a startling save. Nightwing automatically chastises Barbara's, you know, Batgirl to say, it's like, why don't you have him in control? It's like, not like he listens to me as they kind of rocket forward into the next scenario. And where he, you know, Batman knocks down a, a guard as they head into this medicine factory where he comes face to face with the Joker and the Joker just immediately barrages him with untold amounts of truth, you know, about how... Batman, not the Joker, because the Joker hasn't really done anything at this point in time. He's just simply led Batman. He's escaped from prison and stole a scooter, but Batman has caused untold, you know, monetary amounts of damage and, you know, put so, so many lives at risk at this point in time that the true menace of Gotham is Batman and his actions and the apprehension of these villains, of these, you know, like, masked freaks that run rampant around the city. And the only reason that the Joker is doing this is because he's his biggest fan and wants Batman to be a success. You know, you can't have one without the other. And ultimately, this kind of truth serum that's getting fed straight into Batman leads him to feed some medicine to the Joker on his own, which is this untold prescription medication which puts the Joker into a coma for a short period of time. The big thing that we get into this is that we start getting commentary from the newscast, which is going over various points, people defending Batman's perspective and causing, you know, calling him a menace and holding the GCPD accountable. And then ultimately we actually get to the point where Jack Napier is kind of, I don't know, he's almost serenading Batman who's standing outside his window. And the funny thing is that his entire room is covered in Batman memorabilia, which is super funny. It's like the first time that they've ever allowed Batman memorabilia inside a comic book. So I, I dig it. I think it's pretty cool. But he's basically going over the reasons why things are the way they are. And as we kind of get into the conclusion of this particular first issue, there's a whole lot of setup in this book, and it doesn't really conclude with anything but more setup. There's no real cliffhanger at this point in time other than Jack Napier coming out clean cut, no more makeup, no more jokes, no more laughs. Uh, you know, no more cackling of this kind. He is ready to mount his legal defense. He's been essentially tested as a genius off the charts and is ready to kind of seek justice on his own and put the Batman in his place. Expose him for the true villain that he is when it comes to Gothamites. And that's where we kind of like leave the story in issue number one, which makes me super excited for the rest of this eight-part series. So what Sean Gordon Murphy has done with the storyline is really kind of flip the script on where this relationship stands. Because if you have a situation where Batman, which... Batman does cause a lot of collateral damage. He does cause a lot of property damage. We're not sure who actually pays or recovers these kind of things. And ultimately, he puts a lot of the public at risk. And if he's not executing 100% perfect, which we can't assume that he does, there's a lot of risk involved to the general populace. And the only reason they put up with this particular character is that they're trading these things for an inherent safety. And if the inherent safety isn't necessarily at the, the larger end of the spectrum, if it doesn't outweigh the potential costs, then it's not really valid anymore. It's not a it's not a social contract that they can uphold. And what's with the GCPD? Why can't they uphold the law to the same level that Batman does? 
And the fact that they're accountable for this man simply because they have the bat, you know, the bat signal sitting on the top of, you know, police, police square one or wherever it is, and shine it up into the sky to call on this vigilante for help makes them just as culpable for these things. So it's a really interesting twist on this. And then seeing, you know, the Jack Napier Joker character go full on straight, ready to go. I'm going to be serious about mounting a particular legal defense and I'm going to put the Batman in his place and his place is likely Arkham. So I'm really excited for where this goes based on the story. If you're ever, if you've been a fan of Sean Gordon Murphy, you know exactly why I find this book visually appealing. He's got a very distinct style. He's got a very cool line. His darks and the way that he kind of portrays these situations are very interesting. And the the monochromatic aspects of it, you know, how he heavily uses a certain color really draw out certain senses or certain, certain kinds of emotions in certain places. I'm, I'm really a fan of the art style. But I think that his greatest work definitely comes in the writing and the kind of composition of this story and where it's going to go in the future. So I really recommend Batman White Knight number one. I, I mean, I think that it's going to be a real ass kicker of a series. I think it's going to be fantastic. So I definitely recommend you guys go back out and check it out. If you haven't picked up Batman White Knight number one, I feel like it's going to sell out. So it's definitely something that I would go get my hands on right now while you still can. But those are my ideas on Batman White Knight number one, but I want to know what you guys think too, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation, start talking about these various topics. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything having to do with the world of comics.